Today we're going to take a look at the sealed 4-Ball Plus. We're going to do a disassembly and a reassembly of the pump. Now I have the pump sitting on the vise already, so keep in mind in order to get the pump to this position, there was a few other steps that we already took. So depending on your actual pump configuration, it could be a pneumatic, it could be a hydraulic, or it could be an electric drive. Follow the procedure in your manuals for that drive to disconnect the lower. When you are disconnecting the lower, we want to make sure that we stop at the top of the stroke. And the reason we're doing that is to get good clearance to the connection at the top of the pump, but it's also going to put the piston at the top of the cylinder so we have a better evacuation or better draining of the pump once we get it to this position. Okay, I'm going to show you how to drain the lower using the drain ports. I'm going to go ahead and just remove the plug in the bottom. And of course you want to have a, a pail or something underneath to catch any fluid in here. This is a dry pump so nothing's going to come out. And then you can remove the top as well. The other thing you want to do is over on the other side there looks to be what looks like a plug, but that's actually the pressure relief valve. So we're going to go ahead and remove that and do an inspection. Press down on the ball and spring to make sure they freely move. If they don't, replace the pressure relief valve. Alright, we're going to start by removing the checks. I'm going to start with the lower checks and work my way up. This way I can support the checks and the manifolds. Once you have the check housings off of the pump, remove the O-rings and disassemble the housing by applying slight downward force and rotating the valve seat housing 90 degrees to separate. Then remove the seat gasket, the seat, the ball, the ball retainer, and the spring. Repeat this process for all four check valves. I have another check assembly that some models of this pump may use. All of the major components are the same, however, this assembly has an additional spacer plate. Keep in mind if there was a bellows failure, you're also going to want to remove the vent. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the top plate. I'm going to have to remove the collar and then I'm going to remove the four bolts and lift the top plate straight off, being careful not to scratch or damage anything. The next thing I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove the bellows chamber. Remember when removing the bellows chamber to lift it straight up and careful not to damage or scratch the rod. Okay, now I'm going to remove the throat cartridge. I'm going to start by loosening the top nut and that's going to relax some of the pressure on the O-rings and then I'll remove the cartridge. I'm now going to remove the top housing. Remember when removing the housing to lift it off straight and not to scratch or damage the pump rod. Then I'm going to remove the cylinder and the piston. Okay, now I'm just going to push the piston out of the cylinder. Once you have the piston out, you want to inspect the inside to make sure there's no scratches or damage. 
To disassemble the piston assembly, clamp the piston nut in a vise and unscrew the piston rod from the piston nut. Remove the piston, the piston seal, and spacer. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the retaining ring, the retaining washer, the bearing housing, the bearing, and the backup seal. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is remove the bellows from the bellows sleeve. We're gonna clamp the bellows sleeve into a vise and remove the nut. For the throat cartridge, remove the O-ring, the throat cartridge nut, the lip seal and the two lip seal o-rings. 